Welcome to Happy Voyages, the channel where we take you on a journey to the most remarkable places on Earth. Today, we're diving into the enchanting kingdom of Bhutan, where nature and humans live in perfect harmony, happiness is a top priority, and conservation is a way of life. But before we embark on this virtual adventure, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an episode of Happy Voyages. And if you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Now let's set off on a captivating tour of Bhutan. Imagine a place where time slows down, where the wind whispers through the majestic Himalayas, and where the culture is deeply rooted in spirituality. That's Bhutan, often referred to as the last great Shangri-La and a true oasis on our planet. Bhutan, nestled between China, Tibet, and India, boasts stunning landscapes that range from vast forests to sweeping valleys and snowy peaks. Ancient zongs and ornamental monasteries, such as the breathtaking Tiger's Nest, grace this land and are must-see treasures. But what truly sets Bhutan apart is its unwavering commitment to the environment and happiness. Bhutan's devotion to nature is enshrined in its constitution, with a mandate that at least 60% of the country's land must always be covered by forests. Currently, more than 70% is forested. Bhutan takes conservation seriously, making it illegal to hunt or trap wildlife. This has allowed incredible biodiversity to flourish, from red pandas and tigers to almost 800 species of birds. Remarkably, Bhutan is the only carbon-negative country in the world, absorbing more carbon than it produces, four times more. The pursuit of happiness isn't just a phrase here, it's a way of life. Bhutan measures its success not just in economic growth, but in gross national happiness, ensuring the well-being of its people and the land they cherish. This holistic approach measures happiness by considering factors like well-being, culture, environment, education, and good governance. It's not just a number, it's a way of life. Bhutan's government regularly surveys nine domains to gauge the well-being of its citizens, and this data shapes their policies. It's a reminder that true happiness is born from a sense of purpose, and the world is taking notice. Organizations like the United Nations are looking to Bhutan for inspiration. Visiting Bhutan as a tourist can be a truly special experience. The locals are friendly and welcoming, and there are plenty of opportunities to enjoy spectacular views and explore interesting cultural attractions. There are also many Buddhist temples scattered around the country that are well worth visiting, offering stunning architecture and calming ambiance. However, there are a few things to keep in mind when you do travel to Bhutan. In order to protect against the ravages of over-tourism, the Bhutanese government has a policy of welcoming high-value, low-volume tourism. As part of this policy, all foreign tourists, with the exception of Indian nationals resident in their home country, must pay a sustainable development fee of $200 per person, per night. This fee must be paid in advance as a condition of the tourist visa, in addition to the sustainable development fee, you will need to budget for accommodation, transport, meals, guiding, entrance fees, and any special activities. Flying into the Kingdom of Bhutan might get your heart thumping. Because the country's international airport, Paro Airport is often known as one of the most dangerous airports to land in. Only qualified pilots are able to land in the airport and navigate the tough terrains. The narrow runway and mountainous surrounding makes flying into the kingdom only possible during the daylight. There are no traffic lights in Bhutan. Thimphu, the capital city of Bhutan, is the only capital city in the world without a traffic light. The only traffic light you'll witness are traffic police directing the flow of movement at the heart of the town. 
you can see Bhutanese wearing their national dress on a daily basis. Men wear the go while women wear kira. Whether they are going to the market, attending to formal occasions, or performing religious activities, the sight of these local Bhutanese men and women in their vibrant costumes is definitely a unique feature of the country in times of globalization. Bhutanese eat chili for breakfast, snacks, lunch, and dinner. They believe any meal without chili pepper is an unworthy meal, and that's sort of true. If you're into spicy food, then you'll feel like you're in heaven. On the other hand, if spicy food is not your thing, you can ask them to make non-spicy dishes when you have the option of ordering food. Hiking is possible up to 6,000 meters in elevation. Peaks under that altitude are considered trekking peaks. Anything above is considered mountaineering, which is forbidden as the mountains are sacred to the Bhutanese. Snow peaks are considered the domain of the gods and goddesses, and it is believed that if you go there, they'll get disturbed, bringing hailstorms, drought, floods, etc. Expect to see a lot of phallic symbols. It's not porn. Don't be alarmed by Bhutan's phallic obsession. It's part of their culture and religion. You'll see penises painted on doorways, across walls, and even as giant sculptures or souvenirs. This phallic worship is a nod to the teachings of Drukpa Kunle, a revered saint who traveled the country teaching a new form of Buddhism through sex. You'll learn about him, his teachings, and how the phallic symbol became part of Buddhism throughout your trip. The Da, or archery, is Bhutan's national sport. Tell your tour guide to plan some time to take you to an archery field, as it's an activity that foreigners are encouraged to participate in. Most towns have an archery field. Otherwise, watch a local match with some of the world's best archers, which will impress you. Ideally, you'll have enough time to visit places like Paro, Thimphu, Punaka, and more. But if time, or budget, doesn't allow you to stay there for long, focus on visiting Paro and Punaka. In Paro, you'll see the Paro Dzong, and not far from it, you'll be able to hike to the famous Tiger's Nest. This semi-challenging hike takes half a day, about two to three hours up, and one to two hours down, depending on your pace. But it is worth every step. In Punaka, you'll see one of the most beautiful and biggest Dzongs in all of Bhutan. It is very picturesque, and if you're feeling adventurous, you can go whitewater rafting on the river that flows in front of it. So whether you're an adventurer, a culture enthusiast, or simply seeking happiness in the heart of nature, Bhutan welcomes you with open arms. Join us on Happy Voyages as we continue to explore the world's most extraordinary destinations. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video, and stay tuned for more incredible journeys. Until next time, happy travels.